Hey guys, welcome back. So, Real Housewives of Atlanta season 14, a reunion part three. You guys, it was quite interesting. Now I understand why everyone is, you know, thinking that this reunion is a flop. Now I understand why Kenya Moore Hair Care went on to do an interview talking about that the reunion was tame because to me, especially in part three, it was a whole bunch of backpedaling, a whole bunch of apologizing, a whole bunch of I'm sorry's. And I'm like, first off, Ain't nobody standing at ground. Ain't nobody standing 10 toes down to the ground on this little TV show. And it's quite annoying. Now, do I feel like a lot of these apologies are warranted? Yes. Marlo had a lot to apologize for because I felt like Marlo said and did a, a whole bunch of crazy stuff that I felt like you should have never said in the first place. But you know you said it. So now in the reunion, it's nothing but a whole apology tour. And it's just kind of like, okay, warranted however as a viewer from a viewer's perspective this is very boring we do not want to see Sheree and Marlo go on apology tours because that's exactly what part three was Marlo and Sheree apologizing for every single thing that they've done so I have gathered seven clips of Marlo Sheree and Ralph apologizing now we all know that Ralph is you know the biggest gaslighter on planet earth he gaslit the hell out of his own wife Drew Sedora talking about some, oh, you don't deserve a lobster meal. You deserve a damn Lunchable. And in that moment, we would have got divorced. Okay. Then you embarrassing me because why you got all these aliases on your damn background check? I'm just playing. That's not his fault. But uh, what else did he do? And then the girl with the massage trying to give you massages and then you still want to talk to her because she's helping you get, you know, get a book deal and all this type of stuff. And then you're not telling your wife about the book deal. Like, Ralph, you're trash. Sexy, but trash. And I don't think that the love that I truly have for my wife actually didn't reflect. And so and I do apologize for that, baby. You should be apologizing. You should be apologizing because right now on this show, you're the worst husband. No tea, no shade. You're sweet. You know, despite your lunchable comment, you did attempt to be sweet enough to, you know, set up this lobster dinner. Um, you did fire the lady, but I just kind of feel like the way you move, like it has to take you. You have to see yourself on TV to actually realize that you're effed up. You actually have to like have Candy and Sonia tell you that you should not be in communication with this woman who offered you to rub your back with oil. Because rubbing your back with oil, Ralph, is going to turn into you flipping over and it's going to be a whole different another situation. <laughs> so anyways i'm happy ralph finally um you know apologized to his wife because you know he's just terrible in this next clip we have sheree's apology tour all right so sheree is apologizing for calling uh drew Sedora a busted can of biscuits all right let's check this out is she a busted can of biscuits i mean not anymore no honey, she's not honey 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 like Honey, honey, okay, now you have Drew extra, extra, read all about it, her extra dramatic self, honey, honey, Miss Honey, Miss Honey, she's like, honey, look at me, look at me, because y'all know Drew Sedora got the mommy makeover, which I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna body shame, I'm not gonna do it, y'all not gonna, nope, I'm not gonna do it, all I'll say is, let us know the doctor so that we never use him, okay, that's all I'm saying, um, because it's like, girl, we couldn't even tell. And maybe that was the point of it. Maybe it was the same concept as like a professional mini BBL where it's like you want to get a little bit done, but you don't want people to really tell. So maybe that was the purpose. OK, well, in that case, I guess the doctor did a great job. Uh, but honestly, we would have never known that you got a mommy makeover if you didn't tell us. Now, with that being said, besides Drew Sedora standing up talking about some Miss Honey. Sheree basically walked back her statement that Drew Sedora looks like a busted can of biscuits because y'all saw Sheree in the confessionals this season talking all types of cash money shit about Drop It With Drew. And even though, yes, Drop It With Drew is a whole hot mess, just like she by Sheree, you don't have no legs to stand on. No, Sorry, I don't mean to be ableist. I do not mean to be ableist, but sis, you don't have no legs to stand on. You need to sit your ass down, Sheree, because you cannot talk about anybody else's business. I may have to cut that part out. You cannot talk about anybody else's business because, sis, I think Carlos King said something like, oh, Sheree seizes these opportunities. And I'm like, what opportunity has Sheree seized? Okay, the only thing that Sheree has gained off of this damn television show is nothing but a whole bunch of clout and embarrassing clips that are surfacing all over the internet 14 years after the fact. All right. 
Now, so, uh, yeah, in the confession on Sheree was talking about some, oh, the surgeon didn't do a great job and, you know, she doesn't know how to really work out. She can't even do her own uh, workouts and stuff like that. And so she basically called Drew a busted can of biscuits. Now, I wonder, sis still looks like a busted can of biscuits. And I was just like, oh, well, goddamn. Well, good, goddamn. So Sheree's walking that back. Whatever, whatever. Um, moving right along. Then here is Sheree also saying sorry for the dildo comment, which I was kind of annoyed at this. I was like, did this really need an apology? You said well, something about a dildo? Did this bitch throw Ross dildo at the tomb? Oh, y'all do apologize for that. Oh, 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 yeah. I said that. I cannot right before this clip because y'all know I really can't show y'all that many clips. But right before this moment, Sheree was like, what did I say about Ralph? Because Ralph really had like a little beef with Sheree. He was kind of like, Sheree, I feel some sort of way about you because I feel like you're trying to drive this narrative home and trying to carry this bone that I'm gay, which I was really super confused when Ralph said that because I'm like, no, Sheree wasn't trying to drive that home, even though I do feel like there was something sneaky going on with Sheree and Fatum, but different conversation for a different day. At the end of the day, that is what your assistant said. Drew is going around town telling others what Anthony has said about Sheree. And so Fatum just let it be known that, hey, Anthony's doing the same to y'all. It is what it is. Now, when in um, the Blue Ridge of the Mountains and whatnot, when Drew Sedora decided to go to Petco before the trip because she premeditated that she was going to fight with Fatum and she premeditated, premeditated the fact that she was going to throw the doggy bone from Petco, in the confessional, um, Sheree was like, oh, my God, like, what was that? I thought that was Ralph's dildo. Now, I guess some would say, OK, you're trying to insinuate that Ralph is gay. And maybe that was the case. I don't really know. And if that is the case, Sheree, you're kind of effed up for that. But at the same time, just playing devil's advocate, I also feel like, you know, straight guys use dildos, too, don't they? Straight guys do anal training. Straight guys like anal play. There's a lot of straight guys that like they ask, hey, there's a lot of straight guys that like women to peg them. So there's a lot of straight women that use dildos too. So there's a big chunk of the straight population, men and women, that use dildos. I mean, I'm just saying, y'all let me know how y'all felt about the situation. But it was just the fact that Drew, or what's her face, uh, Sheree had amnesia for me basically talking about what did I say about you what did I say about you then they played a clip and then she's like oh I apologize for that I'm sorry my bad and it's just like oh my god everybody's so quick to say sorry you know I love the the generous spirit that's going around but at the same time it's just a little bit boring okay we want to see y'all fight we want to see y'all say sorry <laughs> all right now Marlo had the biggest apology tour last night she uh, at first says, sorry for insinuating that Todd cheats. There was a situation in New York City right before they went to go see the uh, play. Um, I believe it was Sheree and Marlo talking while they were in Glam. And they said something like, oh, I would understand if Candy is moving in her marriage in a very cautious way because God knows what Todd is doing when he's up there in Jersey and New York City and this, that, and the third. Basically insinuating that Todd might be a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Check this out. I feel every man cheats. So that's what? just how I feel. And that's just my upbringing. But that was not my place. I feel every man cheats. That's just how I feel. That was my upbringing. See, Marla, that's the thing. You really need to unpack a lot of that trauma. You really need to unpack a lot of that upbringing. You really need to unpack the way you was raised. You really need to unpack the past. How Portia say? Uh, uh accept your past. <laughs> Marlo, accept your past, accept your past, accept your past, because that was literally you admitting that your past is being projected onto Todd and Candy's relationship, which is why you were trying to insinuate something based off of nothing, not even hearsay, because then Sheree piggybacked off of that conversation and said, well, I never really heard that Todd was doing anything. So it's like, if you haven't heard that, like, the least you could have did is lie like Phaedra and be like, oh, well, I heard this from the streets. Or you could have said something about Mama Joyce and her streets were talking. However, you couldn't even come up with that lie. So you admit that no one even told you that, that there is no real gossip on the street in the city. 
and that you were just basically insinuating that Todd was gay just for the hell of it, just because we have a camera thrusted into our faces and we need to come up with some fake drama. And now, then again, you don't want to stand on it at the reunion and you want to apologize. I'm getting sick of this little apology tour. So this next clip, um, what what is this next clip of? Child, I lost my notes. Okay, this next clip, Marlo apologizes uh, for saying that Candy doesn't do anything for her community. Well, first of all, I was wrong in just talking like I talk. Candy does a damn lot for her community. I know that. Girl. Girl, really? First off, I just want to apologize. I was wrong. I was just talking. Candy does do a damn lot for her community. Y'all know how I get when I get mad. I just say stuff. I just go for the jugular. I just go below the belt. And I say that. And I say this. And it's, you know, y'all know it's not going to be true. And y'all know I'm just going to come up with a whole bunch of lies. And y'all know I'm just going to say anything that just comes to my head. A stream of consciousness of lies. And then again, my whole thing is stick with it. Stick with that. Uh uh. Months and months and months and months after the fact, you knew when you said it that it was a lie. You knew when you said it that it was far fetched. And now you want to apologize at, apologize at the reunion because you want that peach for next season. Okay. Because at this point, you can't have two girls against you. You have two women on the cast that Bravo really, 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 really like. I think Bravo really, really likes Kenya and I think Bravo really, really likes Candy. And so you have two cast members that Bravo is fond of that now refuse to have anything to do with you. And now you want to play, uh, I don't know, you, you just want to repair all of these relationships all of a sudden at the reunion. Right, mixed along with the fact that you were so forthcoming at the reunion about your childhood and your upbringing and the foster care system and this, that, and the third, which I thought was lovely. I honestly thought that that was the best part of the reunion. But it's pretty clear to me and everybody else that that was a setup. It was a whole setup, you know, by Todd. It was a scheme set up by Todd to come to us with the bullshit. Not saying that her childhood is bullshit, but I'm saying it was very strategic in the timing in which she decided to be so forthcoming about that information because you knew that you pissing everybody off is making people not wanting to film with you, which then makes the producers not want to hire you again for another season, okay? So you were trying to get sympathy and you were trying to pay for it, sympathy and payola. Mix along with the fact that now you want to apologize for everything you said throughout the season. Okay, moving right along. This next clip, of course, Marlo again. And I keep clicking the wrong shit and it's pissing me off. Marlo says that uh, she should not have brought Candy up in the top. Uh, excuse me. She should not have brought Todd up in her fight with Candy in Jamaica. I shouldn't have brought him in. I was dead ass wrong. Okay. So at least she knows that now. All right. And then last but not least, Marlo says that Candy is in fact worldwide. And I'm like, girl, are we for real? Like, yeah. So she changed her mind about that. Do you really think Candy is not worldwide? No, she's worldwide. Oh, girl. I'm sorry, Marla. You were super annoying. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Again, all of these apologies are warranted. Yes, Marlo, you did need to apologize for every single thing that you said about that woman that was not true. And that was just so exaggerated and just so dumb. But at the same time, you apologizing for all of this stuff now was a waste of a reunion because all we got was your apology tour. And then Todd and Candy are in the corner, sitting in the last seat, staring at you like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Like basically not accepting the apologies. They're really not even hearing you. Whatever you're saying is going in one ear and it's going out the other. You could tell that Todd really don't care. He's like, we know how Marlo is. She'll do it again next season. Candy is like, girl, I don't F with you, but I'm going to listen to the apologies anyway. So it's really falling on. It's it's really falling. It's, it's falling flat. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about the situation. I thought it was interesting. If I had to rate this particular part of the reunion, I would give it a five out of 10. Wasn't, it wasn't great. Y'all let me know. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to create a great day.